about me, uh, oh, sorry, uh, it's the agenda. Uh, so uh, I'll be covering what is uh, IoT device management, uh, uh, what attestation is, how it actually helps uh, establishing a secure foundation for uh, IoT device management, what is ITF RATS architecture. It's a standard uh, uh, for, for attestation scenarios. Uh, we have built a POC based on RATS. Uh, so I'll be taking you through that. Uh, what components we have used in this uh, uh, POC uh, and, and, and a quick demo actually showing how everything works. So yeah, this is about me. My name is Tushar Khandelwal. I'm a principal software engineer in ARM architecture and technology group in Cambridge. Uh, I have several years of experience in, in developing and designing software uh, for embedded devices. Now I'm working on topics related to software and, and security standards. So, so what is IoT device management? Uh, these services uh, listed here, uh, I'll, I'll use my mouse, I don't have laser. Uh, so. Largely, these are the services, actually. Uh, you'll see a device management uh, uh, server provides to its, its devices. Uh, uh, and, and basically, these services can, be, uh, can help, actually, uh, device management server to manage the remote devices. Uh, so, so main applications of, of, of the server will be uh, doing device attestation which uh, will be my uh, primary focus in this talk. Key management, uh, key management like when, when the device comes up for the first time in the field, how, how, how it is going to register to the, to the server and, and how credentials will be uh, provisioned uh, during the initial handshake and registration. Uh, remote management, I mean, you'll be changing settings on the device. You need a remote management service for that. Firmware upgrade, I think name tells itself what it does. Fault management and, and reporting to make sure the device health uh, in the field is, is good and, and you're aware of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the device's status. So this is uh, a, a simple uh, diagram about uh, how attestation works today. Uh, um, there is a standard around it now. I'll be covering that in, in next slide. But uh, what is attestation, basically? It's, it's a means to establish trustworthiness of a trusted execution environment. And, and in some cases, like in confidential computing, it's, it's a way uh, the, the platform proves its uh, 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 trustworthiness with the workload and how they establish trust uh, uh, between each other. Uh, so as part of attestation, what happens basically, uh, the, the, the uh, device which is claiming uh, the identity or, or uh, producing the evidence actually has to create a token which, which is called as attestation token typically. Uh, it has list of claims which are sent to the remote server and then remote server actually has a uh, uh, list, uh, list of things to compare it against um, like endorsements or, or reference values. And, and then basically based on that it can say okay the device health is good and, and it's a legit uh, device actually who can access my services. But the report alone is not uh, sufficient. You need uh, some verifier actually to verify uh, the, the attestation token sent by the device. So on the right hand side, you can see, uh, you can see attested, attester, which is the IoT device. It has, uh, uh, it has keys provisioned and assets provisioned uh, uh, during the manufacturing stage. Uh, and later on, this key is, is, is used to actually create the token and sign the token. And once the token is created, um, again, it's a, it's a standard format, uh, it format, the token is, is in this format and it is signed, uh, sent to the verifier. Verifier actually does the signature verification and, and 
goes through all the claims. Verifier already has uh, some of the data uh, to actually uh, verify uh, the claims. Um, and, and based on that, it can take decision uh, uh, on, on the, uh, uh, whether to trust the IoT device or not. And then the results are posted back to the relying party, basically, which is the device management server. Uh, So this is this is the ITF uh, RATS architecture. Um, as you can see, there are uh, different blocks here. Uh, one is provisioning. Uh, this is a stage actually during which uh, uh, you provision the verifier uh, with the required endorsements and and the reference values against which the token will be compared later. Uh, then comes the verification part. Uh, in, in this, it's a three-way communication where you have a verifier, a relying party, and a tester. So a tester wants to talk to a relying party, but it has to prove its identity. It has to go through verifier, proves its identity, and then only it gets the passport to talk to uh, the relying party. Uh, and, and, and as part of this verification, uh, a verifier actually takes into account all the schemes and policies uh, you have uh, provided to the verifier, uh, uh, and, and this could be provided by a verifier uh, owner uh, who owns the, 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 the verifier service you're running, actually. And, and this is uh, what we have done in our POC. As you can see, uh, the verifier, uh, attester, and relying party are now replaced by uh, the components we have actually used in our POC, which is Verizon, Wakama, and, and Leshan. So Wakama is running on the, uh, the device, uh, attester. Uh, Verizon is the service uh, uh, doing the verification. And, and Leshan is the device management server, which provides different services to the, to the attester. Now comes the uh, RATS interaction patterns. Basically, uh, there are a couple of ways uh, how you can actually get your token verified. Uh, get the, uh, the, the attester can get, sit, get its token verified. Uh, in this scenario, this is called passport model, and this is what we have done in our POC. Uh, relying party request uh, a tester for its identity, and, and the attester uh, generates the evidence with all the claims, send it to verifier. Verifier appraises the results uh, based on the policies it has and the reference values it has. The attestation result comes back again in a standard format. It is part of IETF uh, draft now. Uh, and then the results are posted back uh, to the uh, relying party by the attester. So this is called passport model because uh, attester now got a passport to actually talk to the relying party. Obviously, uh, I mean, relying party has to verify whether it can uh, trust the, the, the token uh, or the results sent by the attester because uh, a tester can actually modify in between uh, the, the results after getting it back from the verifier. So, so relying party has to uh, do the uh, signature verification uh, provided by verifier uh, as, while appraising the, the, uh, the evidence. This is uh, another uh, interaction pattern where, uh, where again, uh, Communication is initiated by the relying party. Relying party sends the request to the attester. Um, attester actually sends the evidence. And then now uh, the relying party uh, communicates with the verifier directly and, and get the uh, results verified. Uh, so this is called background check because attester doesn't know the verification is happen happening in the background. Uh, so so uh, that's why it's called background check model.
So, so I'll, I'll go through the POC uh, components we have used. Uh, the most important one here is, is Verizon. Uh, uh, Verizon has been derived from verification of uh, attestation, uh, ARM being a core contributor of uh, this project. Uh, 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 we have done a lot actually in this and, and, and it's part of conf Confidential Computing Consortium uh, now. The, the, the architecture is, is it's RAS, RATS compliant and, uh, and it's quite a flexible model. Uh, you have different plugin interfaces and you can write your own clients and, and uh, interfaces to actually talk to the service. So it doesn't depend on, on, on your client being, uh, being in Java or C or Python. Uh, all it wants is basically communicate uh, through these rest endpoints, these rest endpoints. So um, one endpoint is, is there for, for provisioning uh, the reference values and endorsements. And the other uh, endpoint is, is basically through which uh, uh, device sends its uh, uh, evidence uh, to the service. And, and these two services, front-end services, they communicate uh, to the back-end uh, service, which is called Verizon Trusted Services. Uh, and, and in a different scenario, like in, in case of confidential computing, this service could run in a secure, secure world or, or maybe in realm world, uh, whereas the front-end services need not to run in, in uh, I mean, there's no, uh, rule around, around that actually. It, you can run it in, 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 in a normal world as well. So on the right hand side you can see KV store. KV store is the key value pair uh, store where, uh, which, uh, which has the claims and, and reference values uh, for, for the trust service to actually verify the evidence. So this is what happens uh, during the provisioning stage. Um, endorser uh, could be anyone uh, like manufacturer who wants to endorse uh, the device, uh, sends the, uh, the request to the Verizon uh, service uh, to submit the, the reference values. It's, it's a bundle uh, in, in CoreM uh, format, uh, I mean in CBOR format, we call it CoreM. Um, and and this, this is also an ITF draft uh, specification. Um, and, and all the, uh, to uh, the claims are actually bundled um, in this CoreM token. Uh, so this is how you provision the CoreM token into the Verizon service and, and you get back uh, the result as okay if it all goes through well. In verification stage, uh, the, the tester has to create a session uh, with the uh, Verizon service, uh, in, in res and it sends the a nonce uh, as part of the request. It gets back uh, uh, the, the a session ID using which you have to uh, further communicate with the uh, Verizon service, and then uh, it sends the evidence. Uh, and, and, and then that evidence is appraised and verified, and, and then you get back the attestation results from the uh, Verizon service. And the attestation results are in this format. Uh, it's it's uh, JWT, uh, web to uh, Java Web Token format, uh, and, and uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is ITF draft, and soon it's going to be uh, standardized, yeah, become RFC. Now other POC components include uh, Leshan and Wakama. Uh, Leshan and Wakama are lightweight M2M implementations of Java and C respectively. Uh, they're coming from Open Mobile Alliance. Uh, it's called lightweight M2M. It's a protocol for IoT devices to securely connect to uh, one or more uh, lightweight M2M services, servers. IoT devices and servers exchange uh, all sorts of data uh, depending on the IoT device uh, 
and 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 you need to make sure that uh, the channel is is uh, secure and you trust the remote device always and lashan server has got a web interface so it's it's very convenient to use it and view all the services and objects uh, 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 supported by by the remote device This is how the high-level architecture of, of Lashan and Wakama communication. It's like typical uh, server-client uh, uh, diagram, where, where on the left-hand side you can see IoT device. It has different objects like attestation object, device object, software management objects, and, and you can do all sorts of operations with the uh, server. Just forgot to mention that Lashan and Wakama uh, communicate, uh, do initial handshaking uh, using TLS. So, so uh, you make sure that the, the, the channel between the Lashan and Wakama is, is secure. So uh, the prototyping has been uh, done on a um, uh, reference platform. It's, it's for uh, rich IoT applications, uh, Core Stone 1000. It has uh, application cores. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see orange and blue. Uh, this part of software run on the, on the application core. And on the right-hand side, there is Secure Enclave, uh, which is a security engine running trusted firmware uh, for M-Class. Uh, and and, and on, the, uh, on the application core side, on the normal world, uh, we are we are running uh, Linux. Uh, Wakama is is just an application running on top of Linux. Uh, it has support for embed TLS and uh, uh, PSA. I don't know how many of you know about PSA. It's a platform security architecture from ARM. It's a set of guidelines actually, uh, which tells you how you can uh, uh, build a firmware and and uh, I mean. And, and make your platform uh, more secure, actually, uh, by, by following the guidelines of PSA. So on the normal world side, uh, Vakama is running on top of Linux, and then it talks to uh, a kernel driver, which uh, then uh, takes the control to the uh, low, uh, highest exception level. And then from there, it transitions to the secure world. And then the secure world is, is running its own operating system, uh, Opti or, or Trusty, and and then that communicates to the uh, security engine uh, over uh, a hardware channel, uh, which is um, mailbox handling unit, message, message handling unit, MHU, uh, and and uh, uh, yeah, and 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 the normal world actually communicates to the uh, server, Lashan server, uh, which is relying party doing initial handshake uh, using TLS. And, and I, that communicates with uh, Verizon uh, verifier as well uh, to send the token and get it verified. This is how my setup looked like actually. On the right hand side, the FPGA board running Linux. And on the left hand side, uh, we can see two blocks. One is uh, running the relying party server, and uh, the other one is running uh, uh, the verifier. So, so communication starts with TLS handshake between the uh, relying party and the tester, and then relying party requests for the uh, token verification. Uh, the tester takes the request, uh, send the request to the send the evidence to the verifier. Verifier appraise the results, send back the uh, appraised results actually to the to the attester, and then the results are posted back to the uh, relying party, uh, so that relying party can actually uh, make sure the the device is is authentic and share the services with it. I'll So this is the demo. 
on the left hand side you can see a tester uh, relying party um, and on the right hand side uh, verifier so a tester is the the fpga device uh, relying party is is leshan uh, so so i have already booted the the device uh, running linux this can show, this shows you the linux prompt I'm um, uh, pushing the uh, assets to the device, like the certificates and the keys. Now we are running uh, the rel uh, relying party, Leshan server. So the service is now running, and uh, the client is now communicating uh, with the relying server uh, using TLS handshake. You can see the device is, is registered now. It shows state ready. And on the right hand side, this is the web interface of the relying party, uh, Leshan server. And you can see the token uh, uh, status there. So there's nothing as of now. Now on the right, right hand side, I'm uh, provisioning uh, the uh, the endorsements now provision part is okay now it has the reference values and endorsements to compare with now the verification service is running and now I request for the token verification and this is how I, I get the result after the token verification happens. On the right hand side you can see uh, the logs actually. And on the device side also uh, you can easily, uh, this is the server showing it has received the payload. And on the device side as well you can see what token has been sent to the, to the device. Yeah, these are the references. That's it. Uh, any questions? Is there a specific reason you're using the tow and then not the client? <laughs> Token and the client certificates. Yeah, okay, can you? While using the device, you said you then put in there a tow. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, the token has, has lots of things about the information of the platform, uh, like hardware uh, configuration and the software running on top. Sorry, I didn't get your question. No, not the token, the certificates. Uh, and and when, when the device creates the token, uh, it uses uh, uh, the the private keys it has to actually sign the uh, the token. Uh, okay, then I didn't get that part. Yeah, okay. sorry. I, maybe I I use the wrong word. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be anything. Okay, thank you.